Ambassadors, greetings, ambassadors. This is Elder Demetrius uh, with Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. Uh, we're so excited to be able to impart word, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding coming from the original scriptures, coming from the pure source. And so uh, I'm happy to get into our topic today. What will we, will we be talking about? Stewardship, management, and use. We'll be talking about stewardship, management, and use. Now, what's important and why is it important that we focus on these areas? Well, the father is looking for ambassadors to do the will, his will in the earth and subdue it, replenish it, make it just or conducive to heaven. So ambassadors, we have mandates. We have items on our agenda that needs to be done according to the father. And he's wanted to pour in and flow in resources and things of that nature into the hands of ambassadors, but it's qualifications in order to meet, meet that position. So we're gonna be talking about some things that you can do, some things that can get in order, some things as an ambassador, you wanna make sure is in line so that you can be at exclusive use to the Father. So uh, before we like to go into and dig deep into the word, we wanna just let you know what we're gonna cover. So on this slide here, we see what we'll be covering on today, uh, we're going to be talking about what is stewardship. And you can see here it says kingdom definition. Well, we don't always want to get uh, when we get definitions, we want to always go back to the original. We want to get the perfect intent and will of the father as it pertains to uh, kingdom definitions of term. So uh, in this ministry, we like to go back into the Hebrew and dig those things out to make sure that we divide because the scripture tells us that every thought should be taken up captive and subjected to the word and it should be subjected to the word to decipher whether it's light or it's darkness so that's why we give kingdom definitions of terms and we may go to the webster's or the just the surface level of things just to kind of get you engaged but for the most part most of our definitions will be coming from uh, the hebrew lexicon so what is stewardship? We also see what is management. These two go hand in hand. Okay, stewardship and management are two separate things, but they go hand in hand. One cannot work without the other, and we're gonna see that when we go into the uh, Hebrew definition of these terms. Also, we're gonna be talking about areas ambassadors should be effective managers of. Um, and then we're also going to talk about the dangers of mismanagement, how dangerous it is for ambassadors to mismanage resources and time and things like that as an ambassador and how it's detrimental to the kingdom uh, being dispersed through the earth. We're also going to be talking about characteristics of an effective manager, characteristics of an effective manager. We're also going to be talking about the power of obedience and submission. And lastly, effective, and we're going to give some examples of effective and efficient management. And we're going to look at those, those things. So let's get right into it. So what is stewardship? So again, we said we were going to go into the Hebrew and find out what these words mean. So the word steward in Hebrew is the word sakan. And sakan is comprised of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. Now, what's important to understand about the Hebrew Aleph Bet? Each letter in the Hebrew Olive Bet is a word. And so what it helps you to do is get a full understanding what meaning or what that word actually means. So in the uh, Hebrew lexicon, we see the word steward. And it's to be of use or service, benefit. And so when we look at the Hebrew letters that comprise this word, we look at the word semek. And Samek is actually spelled Samek Mem Dalet. And why is that important? Because now we understand that uh, in order to have access to the kingdom with this word uh, Samek, because we see the word, the Hebrew alphabet Mem and Dalet, to have access to the kingdom by way of uh, spiritual uh, connection or the Holy Spirit being a part of us then we can create support. We can have, uh, we can prop properly aid and assist uh, what the word is saying or access to the kingdom. We also have the Hebrew Olivet Kaf, and it's to cover, to open, to allow, 
sanction and validate. Now the Hebrew words that comprise of this uh, letter is kaf pay. And we know that this speaking the strong word of the father. So we allow things to happen in our lives when we speak the word of the father. Some things are sanctioned because it's already deemed sanctioned in the kingdom of heaven. So when we speak the strong word of the father, we're actually um, in connection with the kingdom of heaven. We're speaking exactly what this uh, heaven is speaking to us. And then that last Hebrew olive bet is the letter noon and it's denoting sonship or eternal hair or activity or life. And it's comprised of noon, vav, noon. We see two noons there. And it's that vav is connecting us to the eternal, which the father creates eternal. He's eternal. He uh, lives in eternal time. So unending time. Um, so that's our word for stewardship. So what does that actually mean? So uh, when we go into the next slide, what is stewardship? So we looked at the Hebrew word and we're going to dissect it. So a steward supports what's already allowed or sanctioned through actions, through processes and organization. So when we talk about a steward, we're talking about someone that is um, living out what's already sanctioned in the kingdom of heaven, in the earth by creating organization, by creating processes that keep things in line and keep things in order. And why is that imp important? The father can never bless you in a mess. I know if it's, it's been said before and you hear a different ministry saying that, but that's just not true. The father cannot operate in mess. If the father blessed us in a mess, he would self detonate because his word, he never would go against his word. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but not one word, not one you uh, dot or tittle from the word of the mouth of the father will be uh, excluded. So when we talk about the father honoring his word, he would never step outside of that. That's why when it's important for ambassadors to make sure that, that we stay in order, that we keep things in order. And we're going to give a couple examples of that. Now, a steward is an administrator. And what does an administrator do? An administrator supports by giving full attention, processes and systems to create order, to create an environment in order. So I want to, I want to question you on today. You can do a self evaluation and ask yourself, am I really in order? And two things you can go look at right now is your vehicle and your closet, or just look around your house. If you have a hard time finding things and things don't have a particular place, they don't have a particular spot, you're actually indulging in procrastination because you're actually wasting time. And so that's why it's important for ambassadors to be able to key, uh, keep order and processes in place so that the word can flow. So we won't be uh, confused because we know the author of confusion is the enemy. It's never the father. So order is the product of good stewardship. Order is the product and the result of good stewardship. Every ambassador should be a good steward. There's no exclusions because the father wants to use us. He needs us for his exclusive use in the earth because we legal agents in the earth to do the will of the father. But he cannot do that if we are out of order. OK, now the next point is every ambassador should be a good steward. And lastly, characteristics of a good steward. Let's look at a couple of characteristics of a good steward. And I want you to self evaluate if you're missing any of these areas that we're going to go into as far as characteristics, characteristics go, then let's do a self evaluation. You can always shoot the Hebrew word for repent, turn away from it, do make a different choice, make a different decision. We can do that. All right. So let's go right into it. Characteristics of a manager steward. We'll jump down to that sixth slide. Accountability. <laughs> it's important for ambassadors to be accountable. You know, when you have a leader that's over you, 
it's important for you to be accountable. We need to know where you're at. We need to know what you're doing. In order for you to be dispersed into certain areas, the Father needs to know where you are. What are you doing? How are you fulfilling the will of the Father? So accountability is, is key. Discipline. We And this is the mind, the spirit, and the soul. Okay? The soul encompasses our mind, will, and emotion. And then the flesh. So spirit, soul, and flesh. The spirit is already in perfect image of the Father, so it's, it doesn't need to be fine-tuned. It's already disciplined. But we were given the Holy Spirit when we become into, uh, we get initiated into the kingdom school of thought. But the soul and the flesh has to be disciplined. The Father said, present your bodies as living sacrifices. And also, the choices that we make out of our will, which is in our soul, is a result of exchanging that will for the father's will. And when we exchange that will for the father's will, the father has things in place already set. There are already laws set in place. There are already systems set in place, precepts that have already been um, ordained by the father. And it doesn't need to be fine tuned. We don't need to rearrange it, but we just need to honor it and have a discipline and making sure that that's key in our lives. All right. Delegation. Uh, Many people feel overwhelmed with doing things, but the father has given us the ability to delegate some things. And by way of order being in place, you can delegate those things because you know what things are. You know how things are set up because you created processes and systems that were going to create the environment. It's conducive to order to be around. All right. Honesty. This is important. The scripture tells us lies come from the enemy. Because the enemy is the father of lies. So as an ambassador, if we are found being unhonest and not doing the will of the father, then this is showing that we're not good stewards. So um, next point, faithfulness. Faithfulness to the father. The father is faithful to us. He grants us new mercies every single day. He's faithful to us. And you have to ask your question, uh, yourself a question. Am I faithful to the Father? Am I faithful to the Father? Next one is trustworthy. Can the Father trust you with resources? Can he trust you with uh, teaching your kids the way of the word? Bringing them up in the admonition of the Father. Can he trust you with the time that you've been given? to have the discipline, to have the accountability, to delegate certain items and, and time slots to make sure that you're in the perfect will of the Father, that you communicate with the Holy Spirit, who is the governor in the earth. Trustworthy. Are you trustworthy? And last but not least, if you do all of these things and it's found in your heart, in your belief system, that you don't have a great attitude, you don't have a good attitude, it's in vain. Just telling ambassadors just how it is. You have to have a great attitude. How many people you know that were born in ministry, or I would say, quote unquote, church, and they speak the word and they may even do it, but they have a real nasty attitude. We have to check ourselves. We have to do a self-evaluation because the father wants us to do everything as unto him. So if we are having a bad attitude and and dispersing that out to another ambassador, then that's not a reflection of the father. And we always talk about love and that word love is the, the word of Hob, and it means to reveal the heart of the father. So it's imperative for ambassadors when we're talking about stewardship and management to have a great attitude towards it. Okay. So with that being said, let's go into some of those uh, scriptures for those characteristics, just kind of give you a basis of that. All right, so that's on slide seven. Okay, so when we say accountability, and then we have discipline. Let's look at Timotheus Bet or Second Timothy. We're going to use original terms, um, as you know. In this ministry, we like to keep everything in the original state and intent that the Father created it in, so that we stay in alignment with His Word. All right, no compromising. So for Elohim gave us a spirit not of fear but of power, love, and self-control, discipline, self-imposed rules that you have 
uh, that you live by. Delegation, honesty. So, uh, Corinthian bet or second Corinthian says, for we intend to do what is right, not only in Yahweh's sight, but also in the sight of others. Honesty, integrity and honesty go hand in hand. What are you doing each and every day that's consistent? That's consistent as far as being honest, being diligent in what the father is giving you. And then faithfulness. Only fear Yahweh or Yahweh and serve him faithfully with all of your heart, with your whole belief system. For consider what great things he has done for you. In order to be faithful, it's important to be thankful. In order to be faithful, it's important to be thankful. When we talk about stewardship, because we have processes and self-imposed rules that order can come in place we make sure that we do these things to continue to be faithful trustworthy do not lie to one another because you have taken off the old man together with his deeds and have put on a new man that is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created him so when you have the mindset of the father you have the thoughts of the father and the father says be holy be righteous because he is holy and righteous he can trust us with anything. And we're going to get some examples of that, of being trustworthy and being a good steward and manager in the earth. So the father can be, can use you for his exclusiveness. And then great attitude. We look at Tehillim 45 and seven, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, El, your Elohim has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Okay. All right. So let's go into our next part. And that is what is management? That's slide number five. What is management? Management is the effective, efficient, correctly and timely use of another person's property and resources for the purpose in which they were delegated with a view to producing the expected value back to that person. When we talk about management, trustworthy, being trustworthy, where the father can give you something you manage it just as you would to the father, whatever area it is in. And we finna go, we're going to go over a couple of areas that we as ambassadors should be good managers of. And then we'll go to some examples. Okay. So why is it important? Let's look at the areas ambassadors should be effective managers of. These are areas. These are a couple of areas we're going to talk about. Uh, family. It's important that you're a good manager over your family. Males, we talk about sources, fathers. The father looks at the source because generations comes out, come out of you. And he's watching to see how you manage your family because the way you manage your family is the same way you'll manage resources outside of the family that the father would give to you freely. He wants to give them to you. Finances, we talk about stewardship and it's probably one of the most uh, common areas that we talk about when we talk about stewardship but it's important because many people look for miracles to happen when they need to be effective managers okay when you're an effective manager miracles are all around you because the father know that you can manage them okay so finances relationships how do you treat people how do you treat your spouse how do you treat your kids how do you treat your boss on your job? How do you treat your employees of your of your company? How do you treat them? How are you managing those relationships? Those are important to the father as well, because when he entrusts you, because his will is that all men come into the knowledge of the truth that are saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. How can you do that if you are uh, not reflecting with the inside of you or what the father has put inside of you? So relationships. Resources, resources like gifts and talents and skills, resources that come into your hands. This is important, ambassadors. It's important for us to look at things in a different viewpoint. When we become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, we have to look at things in a different viewpoint. And so when we talk about resources and we're talking about the father giving us resources, we're in the earth to disperse 
not accumulate. Okay. The father wants us to get things in our hands so we can disperse it out to other individuals so that they see the good pleasure of the father. Okay. So that's why it's important to manage those resources. One of the biggest things that's going to help you with all other ones is time. And I've taught this before, but time in a nutshell is a kingdom currency. Why is it a kingdom currency? First of all, the father sits in eternity and eternity means unending time. So he's not governed by time. Man was placed in the earth and we are in a sense governed by time. We have the same 24 hours in a day that the next person has. And what's important is the father is always after equal access. We all have the same 24 hours, but where we choose to spend that kingdom currency will show what's influencing us, will show what's uh, a priority, a high uh, priority to us. We'll also see what is influential in our lives that's causing us to devote kingdom currency to that particular area. Ambassadors, if you are spending more time in entertainment, which we see here, entertainment steals time if we allow it to. And procrastination is a killer of time. So when we talk about good stewardship and having things in order and creating processes that were already sanctioned in the heaven around that. And we dedicate time to those areas. We are showing the father that we're diligent, that we're accountable, that we are good stewards, good managers. So let's go a little bit into that. But time is so important. It's so important. And why is procrastination a killer of time? A procrastination is a killer of time because it causes us to spend kingdom currency where it's not valuable. It doesn't have a return on investment. When you invest time into watching TV all day long or investing time in these games and other things that unlike that are not a part of the system of the kingdom of heaven, not saying that they're bad. But again, if you mismanage time, you can't call yourself an effective, efficient manager or a good steward because you're not allowing and being cognizant of the time that you're wasting that could be used for the kingdom of heaven. So, again, let's go into a little bit more of what management management means so management is administration and it's to be conducted okay and we already know stewardship is managing those resources the hebrew word for management is lenaheo and it means to manage to organize so it goes hand in hand the root word is uh lamed hey noon and lamed is spelled Lamed Mem Dalet again, so we kind of get a better meaning of what it means. It means to have authority through direction from the Holy Spirit, being led and guided by the Holy Spirit, who gives us access to the government of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and then we have that hey, and it means to behold, to have a revelation from the source. Revelation from the source. Who is our source? Elohim is our source. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He has creative rights over our bodies, over everything in the earth. So, hey, then we have noon and that noon is to continue. And we see a picture of a seed denoting offspring or uh, activity or life and then actions and then to it means to reveal his authority through our lifestyles and action. This is what management means. It is revealing the influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives that gives us authority through the kingdom of heaven, through access to the kingdom of heaven. And by way of us having connection to the Holy Spirit, our precept is not tainted. Our concept of green thought is not tainted. Our belief system is not tainted. We get convicted over the right things. When we talk about stewardship, convictions and stewardship is important because when you set up self-imposed rules, when you do something outside of what is deemed to do, then you get convicted. You repent from that and you don't do it again. And by way of that, what influence us into our lifestyle, 
which is an action. What we do, not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. So when we talk about management, we, it's more of an action. You can say something, but not do it. And the father's looking at what you do versus what you say. He wants you to speak the word, but he also wants you to apply it because without applying it, you don't activate laws. And what's important when we talk about management, the more laws we learn. So Stuart, when we when we delegate time to learn more of the kingdom laws, the easier life will get for us. OK, so that's why it's important. All right, let's look at a couple of points of bad management because we wanted to look at a couple of effects or uh, dangers of mismanagement. Let's look at that. So Elohim protects his resources from bad management. Elohim with, withholds resources from bad management. Elohim will not allow growth where there is bad management. Why is that? Because our lifestyles should be a reflection of the father's good pleasure. So if the father gives resources to a mismanager or someone that's not a great steward, then it won't be dispersed because the father's about dispersing versus accumulation. It won't be dispersed to who it needs to be dispersed to. Your biggest uh, strong suit as an ambassador is your ability and power of influence. So it, people will see what you do. Again, we're talking about doing versus saying. People will see what you do. And what you do, if you call yourself an ambassador, is supposed to be a reflection of the father. Okay? So you have to think about that. The next point. Elohim would never answer a prayer requested by a bad manager. Elohim will never answer a prayer requested by a bad manager. How many prayers have you or petitions have you put brought to the throne of the father that have not been answered? Well, the first thing is not the father's fault because the father is so just his word, his revered word would never return to him void. So when it goes out, the ministering angels are sitting there waiting to take charge over that word to make sure it goes in effect. But if we are praying and our lifestyles, what we do is not in order. We're not being great managers of these areas that we went over. Then the father can't get resources to us. It will go against his word. That's why. That's the next point. Religion takes away the very thing we need the most to dominate in the earth, and that is management. Religion has placed miracles over management. And it's dangerous because Yeshua told us when uh, the crowd of men came and told him, show us signs, miracles and wonders. He said only an adulterous uh, generation seek. That's the only thing they seek. That's their only focus is to get a miracle. So that's where religion has failed in educating believers. So now you see in our ministries, people just wanting miracles and don't want to work because of mismanagement and a lack of management. It causes laziness, procrastination, all these things that kill time that it will keep keep you effective as, a, as an ambassador. And it destroys um, your influence. OK, so that's why management is important. Money, resources and opportunities are attracted to management. Again, the father is wanting to get resources to you. But the atmosphere has to be conducive for it to to get to you. And then that last point, Christians have placed miracles above management. We just said that when miracles listen to this, when miracles are a product of good management, we didn't say miracles were bad. We said the focus of it. If you're only focusing on miracles, signs and wonders and not application of kingdom laws. Then you're mismanaging and those won't even take place anyway. So miracles are a product of good management and stewardship, because, again, stewardship creates the environment of order. And so that's what we talked about. So management and stewardship. They work together. 
And we're going to see why it works together, because these two things have to be present. All right. So I want to give something to you, ambassadors. The master key. Well, let's just go to this slide. Number 11. We're talking about the power of obedience and submission. When we talk about stewardship and we talk about management. These two have to be present. They don't. They can't be excluded. You can't have one without the other. So the master key to unlock all other keys is obedience and submission. Obedience and submission to what? The will of the father. The will of the father is that all men be saved, coming to the knowledge of truth. The will of the father is that we make earth conducive, an environment, a place of order and um, a place where management is flowing freely and effectively to allow heaven to come into earth. But how can we do that? We have to obey and submit to what's already been deemed in heaven. Fully commit. We looked at characteristics, being trustworthy to know that when it's time to execute, I can trust you when it's time to get $20 million into the hands of an ambassador. I know that greed will not overtake them, that they will take those resources and disperse them out. They will change some lives, get some men to see that this system, democracy, the system that we live in is not the system of heaven. It's not commonwealth. It's democracy, the people rule. In the kingdom, the king rules. It's two totally different governments. And people have been um, mismanaging their time and studying the word of Elohim and going into these different governments, not knowing that they leaving behind the government that's going to bring them out of that. So with that being said, the next point, there is no proper management without obedience and submission. When we submit and obey, the will of the father through stewardship and effective management, the angels take charge and the word can fulfill what it was sent out to do. Because now as a result of our stewardship and our effective management, we can be used for the father's exclusive use. Let's look at Romeo two, six through eight. Elohim will repay each one according to his deeds. Not what you said, but what did you do? To those who, by perseverance and doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life, unending time, an abundance of kingdom currency. But for those who are self seeking and who reject the truth and follow wickedness, there will be wrath and anger. And we have two more scriptures. I want to go through that. And then we're going to go through uh, some examples. I want you to show. I want to show you in the scripture where effective stewardship and management take place. And it happens all throughout the scripture. We're just going to look at two individuals. OK, so let's go to to Helam 91, 9 through 6. No, 16. So it says, because you have made. This word here is you, hey, Bob, hey, Yahava, my refuge, the most high, your dwelling place. No evil befalls you. And a plague does not come near your tent. For he commands his messengers concerning you, his angels, to guard you in all your ways. They bear you up in their hand, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You tread up lion and cobra, young lion and serpents, you trample underfoot, because he cleaves to me in love revealing the heart of the father therefore i deliver him i set him on high because he has known my name he's known my authority my power what i'm saying and what i can do go hand in hand when he calls on me i answer him and i'm with with him in distress i deliver him and esteem him with long life i satisfy him and show him my deliverance the father's warning to Create the environment. He wants to he wants the environment to be conducive for his word to be there. All right, let's look at that other scripture. That's uh Yasha Yaha, Yasha Yahu, Isaiah. And that's gonna be one in nineteen. 
it says, if you are willing and you are obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And what we did, we went into the Hebrew lexicon and we got this word out and we want to look at this word of willing because we're talking about uh, obedience and submission. If you're willing, we see the Hebrew word because uh, it reads from right to left. We see the Hebrew Aleph Bet, Tav, Aleph, Bet, Vav. Okay. And that Tav is showing us that it's a covenant being taken in place. That it's an established covenant that's already been deemed by the prince that came in the earth that was nailed to the cross so that we have that covenant with the father. And then we see Aleph meaning first or strong or a leader. Leadership is present. Then you have Viet. What's inside? What's inside the mind? What's the intent of what you're doing? What's in your belief system? And then you have a vibe, which is to establish or to connect um, by way of the covenant. So when we say if you are willing and you're obedient, we're saying if you are connected. On the inside, which the governor resides on the inside of us, if you're connected to the Holy Spirit. Who is leading us. Into that covenant. Reminding us of the covenant who's teaching us of the covenant and you're obedient to that. Then everything necessary, everything needed. Is already supplied. Everything necessary needed to fulfill the will of the Father is already supplied to you. But what you're lacking is mis uh, an effective, efficient management system and great stewardship order. Order is con order and submission is conducive to uh, obedience and commission and submission. OK, so let's look into uh, to some examples of that. So effective and efficient management examples. Let's look at a couple of those. Uh, we're going to look at Yosef and then look at Yeshua. So the father was with Yosef and it told us in scripture and he became successful. But what qualified him? Well, let's look at some of these points. His obedience and submission to the Elohim's will. Again, they go hand in hand. He was an excellent steward and effective manager. So when you go into the sheet and read the story, because I'm going to paraphrase that because I want to get to Yeshua. Um, throughout Joseph's life, you see that he was always covered. The father could operate because he was obedient and submissive to his will. And by way of, of him doing that, the environment was conducive for the father to send angels out on his behalf to protect him. Joseph went into prison and I believe he went twice, actually. And even in that period of time, because this is important for ambassadors when we talk about management, because some people are saying I'm managing, but some things in my life stuff still happening. And so even when Yosef went into that prison, it still said the father was with him and he still showed favor with him. So many are the afflictions of the righteous. So things are going to come up. Life is going to happen. But it's your accountability. It's being faithful. It's being trustworthy to the word of Elohim that it's going to work, that you have full confidence in the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. So when those things come up, you manage even better. And we looked at even with that, we'll, we'll talk about that. You're, you're, you're creating order. You still keep things in place, still keep things in order because the father can work through that. OK, so next point, his focus was always to do the will of the father. And because of his ability to manage, Joseph was given charge over the land of Egypt because of the good management and good stewardship. And then as a result of him doing that, the same ones who sold him into slavery were the same ones who benefited from his position. Benefited from his position of being in right standing with the father when we start talk about righteousness. So what's important to take out of that? Yosef was given charge over the land of Egypt because, first of all, he had a gift. He managed that gift well. He had a gift to in interpreting dreams and that gift. Allowed him to go in front of Pharaoh, another king. And 
by him utilizing that gift. And even when he uh, utilized that gift, he was saying that if the father is, if it's his will, that I continue to manage this gift and be a good steward over this gift, that it operates to benefit him. Okay. And so when he operated that gift, it put him in a position to manage because it also told us in scripture, he was a great manager, right? So he was given charge over the land of Egypt. And what's important, because he still, he still stayed connected. So how many ambassadors do you know when they get things, they get resources, they've been doing what got them to the point, and then they cut it off? How many people you know about that? Is that you? Have you got to a certain point, Elohim brought you to this point? Have you cut yourself off from the favor of Elohim continuing to grant you favor each and every day? But in your ability, because we're talking about Yosef, because of his ability to give it back to the father, what's been given to him to be a great manager, to, to be effective, efficient, and to create order. He was able to, uh, the seven years of famine that came in, so it was the seven years of good that everything was going well. Everything was going fine. Uh, it was plenty, plenty in the land. Yosef said, let's continue to manage effectively. Let's continue to create order processes and systems in place. So when, because he had, he was hearing from Elohim, he knew that in the, in the next seven years was going to be a famine. So by way of him in connection to the father, continue to stay connected to him, even when things were going good, even when things were going well, even when things were at, for, for us, we think it's perfect. He still was connected to the father. So when the famine came, it said that they had so much that they were able to disperse. Now, when we talked about the father is after distribution and not accumulation. They had so much, but because the father could trust Joseph, because he could manage, he knew that he was going to delegate those resources. He knew that he was going to be accountable. He knew that he was going to be trustworthy. He knew he was going to be faithful to his word, that the same ones that sold him to slavery had to come and buy from him. And he brought them out of the abundance that they, that they were in because of his position, never got out of position. So that was one example. And let's go right into Yeshua uh, example um, in the scripture. Um, so let's get up uh, Marcus 6, 30 through 44. And I'll explain that. So Yeshua exemplified good stewardship and effective management in the earth and set the blueprint designed for ambassadors. When Yeshua was in the earth, he told us the works that I've done, I'm leaving your helper, the governor. I'm going back to the father where I was at. And because the father trusted me, knew that I wouldn't turn away from his word, knew that I would stay connected to him. Even when the resources came, he sent me in the earth to redeem man. And by way of Yeshua's obedience and submission, Many were being saved, many were saved and are continue to be saved and coming to the knowledge of the truth because of his sacrifice in the earth. So um, let's look at that and let me get it up as well. But it's important to understand that Yeshua was a blueprint. He was definitely a blueprint for us to get in line with what the father wants us to do. OK. So let's get that up. I tell you what, let's just, we're going to paraphrase that for the sake of time. So what did Yeshua do in the earth? <laughs> Yeshua was able to feed 5,000 with, with the little bit that he had. But <laughs> what he exemplified was good stewardship. He delegated certain things. So when he was um, given the resources from the father, he was able to disperse them out. And even though it seemed like it was a little, they had more than you see in the scripture. They had more than enough to eat. They had more than enough to keep them and sustain them um, because of his great management. 
he was able to connect to the father. He gave thanks to what was given the resources. So he was showing that I'm trustworthy. I'm honest that I'm going to do what it's supposed to do. Then he delegated other leaders to disperse out the resources that were given again, not accumulating saying, oh, well, you know, it's just five loaves of bread and five fishes. So I'm going to keep that. That's, that won't be enough. That won't be enough to feed 5,000 people getting out of position and creating by him creating processes and systems order was in place which gave the angels the charge to take place with the word being more than enough more than enough and so by way of him doing that the father was able to bless what he did because of his obedience and submission to the will of the father so what's important for us as ambassadors is we want to thank you for tuning in to this is that by way of our obedience and our submission to the will of the Father, because it's in our belief system, because we've changed the way that we think, we're no longer of the world, but we, we're in the world, but we're not of it. By way of us taking on a new mindset, a new belief system, and start to get things in order, and our characteristics that we went over, being faithful, being honest, being trustworthy, being accountable, okay? that we get these things in order so that the father can use us because we're talking about steward manage, management and out of that we are able to be used okay so ambassadors let's do a self-evaluation check and let's get things in line so that the word of the father will show up present in our life in every single area okay so with that being said thank you for tuning in Share this out with as many people as you can, and you be blessed. Shalom.